Hi guys and welcome back to The Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cameron Getting West Ham United nil, Everton won at the London Stadium today. A debut for our third kit. I haven't quite got it on but I've got the warm-up top on so it all counts as the same. A debut for the new third kit and a fantastic, fantastic three points in it as well. A really, really, really professional, solid performance that was by Sean Dice's Everton side today. I thought we managed the game absolutely perfectly. The start of the game, West Ham had a bit of a 10-15 minute spell where they looked lively, they looked like they were on top, they looked like they fancied themselves, you know, this afternoon and I, I watched it and I remember thinking, is this going to be another one of those afternoons where we concede in the opening 10 minutes and then we concede again, you know, 15 minutes later and then we end up going on to lose the game 2 or 3 nil or 3 or 4 nil, and we're all sitting here saying what a waste of time that was. But the manager deserves huge, huge credit for today because he saw that in the opening first 10 or 15 minutes. He saw that West Ham started the game well. He saw that they were confident. He saw that they were a little bit on top. He saw that they were wanting, obviously, to avenge a couple of defeats that they'd had in the last week or so. And we managed the rest of the game absolutely perfectly. We frustrated them. We defended brilliantly once again. <clears throat> the entire back line, absolutely fantastic. couple of hairy moments, like I said, in those opening uh, couple of minutes of the game, sort of opening half an hour of the game, a couple of hairy moments. But beyond that, Jared Branthwaite, absolutely fantastic. Once again, he's just been given the Man of the Match award, I believe, by Sky. James Tarkowski, as solid as you'd like him to be, as always. I thought Mikhailenko was absolutely brilliant. Again, a really difficult um, task for him today to, to have to defend against players like Jared Bowen, obviously, with a lot of pace. Paqueta at times, who'd, who'd come across. But I thought, uh, once again, Mikhailenko was absolutely out standing and Patterson coming in again couple of hairy moments at the start of the game but settled really well and then performed brilliantly for for, for the rest of it and and I think is is given himself a real real platform to be able to build on now and and really stake his claim as the number one right back in this team because like I said I thought he was really solid today but not just the defense everybody worked out today I thought that was Amadou Onana's best Everton game in, in his entire career and I know I've said that a couple of times about Amadou Onana or oh, this was his best game in an Everton shirt that was his best game in an Everton shirt but today he was absolutely phenomenal he was everywhere every challenge he had to make he made brilliantly every time he had to battle in the midfield he did he didn't shy away from anything he was getting forward you know he was defending well he was you know, when we needed to counter attack, when, when West Ham had a little bit of possession, a little bit of the ball, and we needed to break away with it and counter, he, he, you know, he was able to pick the ball up and run with it, use his strength, use his physicality, use his speed. He was absolutely brilliant today, Amadou Onana. He was second to none. He was fantastic. Um, the forward line, you know, like I said, Dom, once again, wasn't going to be one of those afternoons where he gets five, six, seven, eight chances to score a goal, but he doesn't need it. Dominic Calvert-Lewin has just showed today why, whilst he is fit, he is one of the best strikers in this country without a shadow of a doubt. Without a shadow of a doubt. His issues have all been to do with fitness and to do with injuries and being able to stay injury free. But I don't think there's many centre forwards in this country that when injury free are better than Dominic Calvert Lewin. English centre forward, should I say, are better than Dominic Calvert Lewin. He showed today that he only needs one chance, he only needs one sniff of a goal. Brilliant turn, that, 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 you know, back sort of flick turn that he likes to do. It's an excellent, excellent chance. And it come out of nowhere. I was sitting there watching the game with my girlfriend and she said, you've surprised me there. Usually you're sort of screaming and shouting before the goal goes in. Like, go on, go on, it's it, it's it. There was none of that with the Calvert-Lewin goal because I didn't expect it. I didn't expect him to be able to turn on, on, on the half turn and hit that shot from outside the box so well, uh, you know, targeted into the bottom corner. It was it was an absolutely fantastic, fantastic finish by Dominic Calvert-Lewin and he deserves an immense amount of credit for that. The two wingers as well, I've, I've put on social media before that I think Jack Harrison and, and Dwight McNeil deserve an awful lot of credit today as well. I know Jack Harrison missed a couple of opportunities in the first half and had we have gone on and lost this game, maybe we'd be sitting here saying, you know, Jack Harrison should take responsibility because he, he needs to be doing better there and he does need to be doing better there. The first one when he's got three, you know, there's there's three Everton players on one West Ham defender and he manages to make a, a mess of it is, is really poor. But one thing I did notice was in the last 10, 15 minutes of the game, 
when West Ham were getting more and more frustrated. But as they were getting frustrated, they were trying new things. They threw Danny Ings on, who usually is absolutely guaranteed the goal against Everton. You know, they, they were trying all different things. And even though Dwight McNeil and Jack Harrison were quite visibly shattered, I think you could see on both of their faces when the camera was, was aimed at them or when they were having to run or when they were having to make a move, I think you could visibly see the tiredness in their faces. They still didn't stop. They still didn't stop battling. They still didn't stop chasing for every ball. They still didn't stop trying to, uh, you know, trying to um, to stop the counter attack or to, you know, to, to 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 stop West Ham getting forward and creating an opportunity. They both worked their absolute bollocks off from the first minute to the very last minute today. And even Dwight McNeil with. Two minutes to go of, of injury time. He's, he's got the ball in a good position. He has a shot. You know, it gets blocked. He wins it back again. He tries to hold it up. This was a player who 10 minutes earlier, I was, you know, pretty much screaming at me at my phone saying, you know, take him off, Dice. He's absolutely shattered. And if we lose because we've been attacked down that side and Dwight McNeil is absolutely knackered and can't get back, then we'll all be sitting here thinking, why didn't you change him? Why didn't you put Dan Juman on for a bit of fresh legs? Why didn't you, you know, move it about? But he, he, he never gives up Dwight McNeil and I think that's something that he will go a long way at this football club with that effort and with that mentality and with that character and with that personality. Um, you know, I'm 25 years old and, and, and people always say, uh, you know, you, you can never be a club legend unless you've won a trophy with a football club. And we spoke not long ago about the Seamus Coleman argument and whether or not Seamus Coleman is a club legend. And the argument against club legend was you've got to win something to be a club legend. And, and in my lifetime, Everton have never been able to do that. So the closest I've had to club legends are players that step on that pitch and give absolutely everything every single time they go out there. Be it Tim Cahill, <clears throat> you know, be it Leighton Baines, be it Seamus Coleman, be it Phil Jagielka, players that will go out there and will give absolutely everything they've got for that for this football club, for our football club. And they're the players that you look back on and you might go, all right, they might not want a trophy, but, you know, again, I'd like anybody to argue me point that Seamus Coleman isn't an Everton legend. Dwight McNeil, I'm not saying he's on the way to becoming an Everton legend because he's got a lot of work to do, but that type of mentality and that type of effort and desire and work rate and character is exactly what's needed to be an Everton legend. The, the you know the 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 want to run that extra ten yards in the final ten minutes of a game when you're absolutely shattered, you're winning one nil, you played for ninety minutes, you've got nothing left in your tank, but you see a ball that's free and you die for that ball. You know, instead of going, oh, do you know what? I'll just wait back because I'm a bit tired here and I don't want to make that move. That's what Dwight McNeil's got. He's got that desire to go for every ball, even in the latter stages of games. And he was doing that today. And, and I think that was a real big help as well. I think that was a real big help. And yeah, like I said, I thought it was a, 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 a fantastic performance. It was a... A very Sean Dyche-esque performance, wasn't it? We saw a lot of those at Burnley. We haven't seen a lot of these at Everton so far. And, 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 and people have this assumption that Everton will stay up and Everton will be fine because Everton will perform the way Dyche knows how to make his players perform and then they'll win games. That performance today was a Sean Dyche performance. You know, we were away from home. We were against the cost. They had a couple of, you know, opportunities in the opening 10, 15 minutes. And what we did was we nullified those opportunities. We we stopped them from uh, creating anything really clear cut for Jordan Pickford after the away. But then we shut the game down completely. We frustrated them. We battled. We worked hard. We took our chance when we got it. And then we defended again. We defended in the midfield. We were fantastic. Um, and that is an, a Sean Dice yes performance. And we did see a lot of those at Burnley. But we haven't seen a lot of those at Everton. And... I hope we see that performance every week because we'll win a lot of games playing like that because we'll frustrate a lot of teams being able to do that. West Ham are a good side. West Ham won a European trophy last season. West Ham are a, a really solid side. I know they've had a couple of big defeats recently, but they, they generally are quite a solid side. They're a solid side at home. When was the last time we beat them at um, the London Stadium prior to COVID? Because as we always say, the COVID season doesn't count. I think it was 2018 maybe. Bernard scored in that game. We haven't beaten them since then. And we've gone there today and we haven't really ever looked like we were in trouble. There was a couple of hairy moments. I think um, Ben Norman had a shot when he came on and Bowen had a couple of half moments. But nothing really that Jordan Pickford will be having nightmares about tonight. And that was because of the way the manager set up. And he needs to be able to do that more frequently because we'll get results and we'll, and we'll be able to win games of football doing that. But yeah, like I said, not a massively exciting game of football, not a massively eventful game of football. There wasn't an awful lot happening. The neutrals probably sat there and watched it and gone, oh, what a boring win that was. But as we know as Evertonians, 
I don't care whether it's an exciting 17 nil win or whether it's a boring, you've fallen asleep, you can't be arsed watching it, 1-0, dogfight, shithouse win. I don't care. As long as the end of that sentence is, we've won today and not, well, we played really well, but we lost, or we played really well, but we drew. No, I don't care. As long as we win games of football, that's all that matters. And Everton at the moment are, I think it's fair to say, in a really, really good bit of form. Discounting last week's result, because let's be honest, you know, firstly, we were up against a very, very good side away from home in Liverpool. Secondly, we were robbed by the referee. Man, and it's as simple as that. Discounting that because of such a blatant biased referee and decision. The games that, you know, were prior to that, Bournemouth at Goodison, finally a really good, solid performance at Goodison, a really good, convincing win at Goodison. Brilliant. We have Brentford, uh, you know, in, in, in a couple of weeks before that, another really, really good, solid uh, performance, really good solid win. Obviously, we had the Luton results in between, which was disappointing. Uh, with Villa in the cup, a really solid win there as well. And then obviously we've we've won today. So in the last what six games, we've won four. We've beaten Brentford, we've beaten Bournemouth, we've beaten Aston Villa, and we've beaten West Ham United. The only games we've lost are Liverpool in the derby, which again one of them, and Luton at home, which is a disgraceful performance and disgraceful result. We know that, but today was huge. It was huge that we bounced back. As I said in the preview going into this game, it's been a truly terrible, terrible week for Everton Football Club. It really, really has. The Merseyside derby defeat and everything that happened in the um, in the fallout of that with the referee and decisions, etc. We then obviously had the devastating news of the passing of Bill Kenwright, which hit everybody like a ton of bricks at the football club. We've had all of the FFP stuff over the last few days about the Premier League wanting to basically destroy Everton Football Club. Apparently, there's no agendas or bias in football, though. Yeah, all right. Do me a favour, mate. You've just watched an agenda and a, and a bit of, you know, a bit of foul play in the boxing last night. It happens in the footy every week, mate. You just don't want to listen to it. Anyway, it was a really tough, tough week to be an Evertonian. And we said in the preview, hopefully the manager can go out and set these players up to go and give us a happy ending to what has been a shocking week. That's what Bill Kenwright would have wanted. He would have wanted the Everton team to go out today. Quite poetic, as I said in the preview, his first Everton manager... You know, David Moyes in one dugout and his, his final Everton manager, Sean Dyson, in the other dugout. Quite poetic game of football to play, you know, or following such devastating news uh, earlier in the week. But Bill would have wanted us to go out, battle, work hard, fight, give everything, show everything for this football club. You know, show that this football club means as much to these players as it did to Bill Kenwright and go and get the three points. And that's exactly what we've done today. And we can all sit back now, enjoy the rest of our weekends, look forward to a game on Wednesday against Burnley, which... You know, hopefully we can go and win that as well. And then all of a sudden, we're coming out of this week with a much more positive outlook on things. Um, it was a difficult game today. Let's not get it twisted. The media will be full of West Ham were terrible, West Ham are this, West Ham are that. It was a really, really difficult game today and a difficult game to manage. Um, and I, I thought we managed it really, really well. Um, and like I said, we, we more than deserved the win. We more than deserved the win. You know, we had the better of the opportunities. Jack Addison's fit few opportunities before uh, Dom's goal. And then even when Dom scored, then we went 1 0 up. The core has a chance to, a golden chance to make it 2 0. And, and I actually think he should do much better with it. To be honest, I think he's got enough time to take a touch, run with it, and, and slot it past the goalkeeper. I don't think he needs to take it first time. I don't think he needs to panic with it. But. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether we win one nil, whether we win two nil, whether we win eight nil. Doesn't matter. We've won the game of football, and that ultimately is um, is all that matters. And and now we can look forward to a, a midweek game in the cup, and then obviously another difficult game next weekend as well. But what was what was absolutely essential today was that we completely and utterly eradicated and forgot about last weekend's result at Anfield. Forgot about the Merseyside derby, didn't even worry about it, didn't even think about it. And we went into this game with the confidence and the momentum that we took after, you know, the fantastic win against Bournemouth at Goodison Park last time out, last time out at Goodison. Um, and we did that today. Uh, we looked cool, we looked collected, we, we, we just looked absolutely excellent today. Um, the game plan worked perfectly. It wasn't a great game of football, but the game plan worked absolutely perfectly and, and that that you know is 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 really really good to see. The manager deserves credit. As I've said before, I'll give him credit when he deserves it. He deserves credit today. Uh because that was a you know, it was a it was a really well managed game of football. Really well managed game of football. People will say it wasn't a great performance because you didn't, you know, it was boring. It was a really well managed game of football that today and Everton deserved the win. Everton utterly deserved the win and we got it.
get in up the toffees let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below if you have enjoyed this one please do leave a like we'll be back with the player ratings very shortly so don't forget to look out for that video as i said big big win today exactly what we needed after a really difficult week for the football club i'm sure the manager and all of those players will have been thinking of bill going into this game and you know hopefully bill will be uh up there smiling at, at today's results and today's performance because it was a one to be proud of and one that I'm sure we're all sitting here proud of. So, yeah, there you go. Big thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed this, please do leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new. We'll be back with the play rating shortly, so look out for those. Up to toffees. Get in. We'll see you after.